Hi guys, Todd here. Uh, today another little tutorial. Right, uh, working in a vape shop and uh, you know you get a lot of people coming in wanting to buy drippers or recoil, do coiling and things like that and they go, it's a faff, I can't be bothered. So they go and buy yeah, a sub tank or something like that instead. It's dead, dead easy. So easy, it's unbelievable. It's so easy that I can do it badly. Well, no, actually, I'm, I'm kind of alright at it. Um, so what I'm going to do is a bog standard dual coil build on a dripper and show you exactly the process that you should do to get a decent vape. And it's simple. It's so simple. Uh, there is a website that you need to go to and it's steamengine.org. Uh, the, you know, the link will be in the, the YouTube description if you want to find this tool. You can get apps for your phone. You can, you know, there's there's loads of stuff out there. But the one that I use on a daily basis is steamengine.org. Um, and it's a good site. Right. We're going to nip into a screen capture of uh, me going through Steam Engine and... The aspects of it I use, you know, the bits I use. Now, this isn't a full-blown, you know, this is how steam engine works and you've got this, 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 that, that, that. You can dive in deeper. What I am showing you here is just the tip of the iceberg. But what you need to know to, you know, build a coil or, or wrap a coil successfully and get up and running. And, and that's what this is about. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to do claptons or stuff like that mainly because I have no interest in it um, but you know if people are wanting to start off hopefully this will be a good way to do it right uh, we're on steamengine.org here and uh, I'm on the coil wrapping tab there are other tabs here for ohms law battery drain and things like that but the one that I would suggest go and just have a muck about with uh, the ohms law uh, a lot of people bypass this now because, you know, with regulated mods, it does everything for you. Uh, but uh, I would suggest you get the hang of this and understand it. Uh, basically, you, you know, you want to know your resistance of your coil. A 1 ohm coil at uh, 4.1 volts, you know, that's the amp draw. Uh, and that's the wattage you would be at. But this is the thing that used to be important, this number here, you know, because it... On our batteries, you know, we want to we have an amp limit in our batteries. So when you were going down to really, really low things like this, you know, you could tell what the amp draw was, the amp limit of your battery, you tied into this figure here. So you knew if your battery was up to the job. The one we're interested in is the coil wrapping. So all I use, and this is just plain simple, uh, I'm going to go for, I'm going to be using standard canthal. I'm not using nichrome, titanium, or any of that. So I'm using canthal. I'm not using twisted. It's round. Uh, I'm going to use 0.3. You can type in here as well. You can just... Or you can try to. 0.3. Uh, I'm going for a dual coil. And my target resistance is I want to go for 0 0.8. Because that's where I usually like to be. So that's it. That's all you have to put in. You also have to put in the inner diameter of your coil. So if you're going to use like a screwdriver, a drill bit, a Kuro Concepts, a Coil Master tool, you know, you want to put in the diameter of the rod here. So I'm going to use 2.5. And you can see that that has now updated everything here. So that's my wire length. The number of wraps per side, 7.49. I'm going to take it down to 7. Uh, I'll just take it down to 7 rather than taking it up. So it might not be 0 0.8 on the nose, but uh, that's what I'll do. I'll do 7 wraps per side. Gives you the resistance per coil. Uh, it also tells you what's going to happen here. Um, you know, at 10 watts, I'm going to get, you know, quite a cold vape. Uh, you know, if I was to take it up to 24 watts, I'm going to get an OK vape. And then yellow, you know, how far would we have to go? There we go. Uh, up to about 40 watts and it would start to get really warm and then above that would get really hot so that's a nice wee feature as well the only other thing to point out here is the leg length total per coil um, I have left it at default ever since I started using steam engine I just leave it there um, 
it works for me. Uh, some people might disagree, but that's how I use it. So once again, type of wire, the diameter of the wire, what setup are you going for, your target resistance, the inner, inner diameter of the coiling implement, you know, the rod, and then it tells you how many wraps you need. And that's it. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, kits on the market these days, uh, coil master kits and things like that. But if you, listen, all you need, a couple of screwdrivers, a pair of clips, toenail clippers, maybe a pair of scissors. Uh, you'll probably, depending on the atty you have, you'll probably need you know, a little Allen key as well, your wire, and I've also got some cotton beating here as well, some cotton, or you use the cotton or the wicking material of your choice. It's entirely up to you. Now this is just a standard dripper. This is uh, the Resurrection uh, by E Phoenix uh, because it's the, the only dripper I have that is just a standard three post. All the other ones I have uh, have a T piece, which means they have two holes in the middle, you know, two posts. Uh, so, but I thought I would show you with this one uh, just to make it a bit. You know, for those of you that don't have atties with T pieces in the middle or two positive posts. Okay, no fancy coil master kit here or anything like that. So if you don't have one, don't worry about it. What I do know is that the diameter of this screwdriver is 25 millimeter, and that's all that matters to me. Uh, I have some cantle wire. I couldn't find my 0.3, so I've got 0.32. So I went back to a steam engine and it tells me that I need eight wraps per side of this stuff. So I'm on the spool here and you know, I've, I've just got my, my wire. So all I do, I mean, and this is literally all I do on a day-to-day -day basis, is take a length and pin it. You know, I'll zoom in a little bit. I take a length and I pin it just on the edge there. And then just, and, and, and it is just this easy. One, two, three, four. So I, there's just a wasp come in and it's buzzing around my head. So there's a four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm just going to snip that bit off. So there we go. Uh, so you can see that the coil's not tight, it's not anything, it's just it's a bloody mess right now. Uh, but I, I really don't care. Um, because a lot of the, your work in tidying up gets done you know, when the coil is actually on the atty. Now what you can do is you can push it down and compress it um, that way. And, you know, it'll, it'll, that'll get it tighter. But, you know, you know, don't worry about it too much. Um, you know, I've got both my wires facing out the same way. I've got a bit of a straggly coil there. I've got eight wraps of 0.32 and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to do another one. So I've done my wraps and uh, I've got my atty and I've made sure that I've backed off the screws on here. I've got my two messy coils. Um, you can see they're not perfect. These are micro coils. Uh, micro coils because they're, they're going to be tight once they're finished. So all I'm going to do is just take my coil and pass it through the holes. Actually on this atty I need to bend the, the end wires up a little bit so that when I pass it through the holes uh, it doesn't get stuck coming out the other side. And there we go. So I'm just going to pull that through. Now as you're pulling that through you will find that the, the coil can get you know deformed when you're tugging away on it. So take the rod that you used or whatever coiling implement you had, pass it back through over it like that and then pull the wires and that way it makes sure that you know your coil is not getting deformed. So I'm just going to push that there and then I'm going to tighten up the negative on this side. So I've tightened that one off and I'll just clip the wire and that's her. Now, that's one on. Now, I tend to just take this wire here and just pull it to the side so it's out of the way because you have another wire to go through there as well. 
So once again I'm just going to take these wires and I'm just going to pass them through some holes. Uh, I'm, I'm not following my old advice. I used to give this advice out many moons ago when I did coil in a lot on film and that was cut one leg longer than the other. It makes it a lot easier when you're uh, trying to get two wires <laughs> through two holes at the same time. This can be when it, it can be a good idea to invest in proper snips so that you can get in at the, the wires a lot easier. Sometimes it can be a bit, you know, a big snip. Toenail clippers like this, it can be a bit of a, a bugger to get in there. So as I said, there's my two messy coils. Now, I'm, I'm just putting the, the rod back through again, and I'm just kind of taking the, the coils out a little bit. Because I like my coils to be, you know, quite close, well not too close, but closer to the outside of the edge here, so that the, the air is that comes in is hitting them bang on. And that's just what I like. So all I'm going to do now is find a device and just screw this dripper on here. Now, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the the wattage or the voltage or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to turn it right down. Quite low. And just push the fire button. Now, I like to do this, turn them right right down low and just apply heat gently to begin with. Now, I am using ceramic tweezers here. Uh, that means that I can touch the coils when pushing the fire button. If you have tweezers that are not ceramic, if you touch these coils, it will short out and they'll just go pop. So, ceramic tweezers are a worthwhile investment if you're going to be coiling a lot. So. I'm just gently heating these up and giving the coils a little squeeze. I'm just taking my time on it. I mean, I, I'm never in a, a rush to do these things, you know. The thing is, once you've done this coil, this is going to do you for... Oh, all you have to do is change the, the cotton out. You don't have to change the coil out every week. Uh, I've just been heating these up and just tightening them off. I turned the wattage up, I'm up at 20 watts just now, or 3.7 volts, and I did indeed manage to get 0 0.7 ohms on this, which was after tightening up the coils it came out to that. So pushing the fire button, and the coils are heating from the inside out, and, and that's what you want. It's just heating from the inside out. Now, these might not be any beautiful coils, they might not win any awards, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as they're gl glowing from the inside out, they're providing heat, that's it, job done. That That is your primary mission here. Um, so I am more than happy with that. So, now to the cotton. Before you start mucking about with cotton, make sure you've locked your device or take the atomizer off the device. I've just made sure that mine's is locked. Uh, that's because if you apply heat to dry cotton, it'll just incinerate. So all I'm doing is I've got a bit of cotton bacon here. Just on that in the end. And I'm just going to pass it through the hole. And that's pretty much it. Find my tweezers. Now, uh, cotton, you want it so that you can pull it through quite easily. It doesn't want to be really, really slack. There should be a tiny little bit of tension there, but that's just about bang on for me. So what I'm going to do now is once I've got my cotton through there, I'm going to cut a bit off, cut a bit off, and that's, I know for this atomizer that that's, I've got really deep wells in this atomizer. The amount of cotton you need is going to vary depending on the atomizer. Um, and it, a general rule of thumb is uh, a lot of people, you know, they think they have to cram things full of cotton. Uh, a lot of the time, a lot, most devices work with less cotton, you know, work better with less rather than more. Um, or that's been my findings in, over time. So that's me with that. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I'll put some more on the other side. So that's me all cottoned up, so all I'm going to do now is get some e-liquid and just test fire this because I know what the resistance is now 
um, I, I know everything's the way I want it uh, so we just need to get this in shot would help for a start so that's me all soaked up there uh, let's have a test fire one two three four five fire so there we go so that's uh, that was at 20 watts I really want to be a lot higher than that because I'm in a 0 0.5 0 0.7 ohm coil so I'll, I'll take it up to about 26 that'll do me and that's the kind of vape that I like quite happy with that quite happy with that um, another thing to point out is when you're putting um, your air holes should always be in front of the coils always um, if your air holes are off from the coil then you tend to find that you get a harsher throat hit so I'm just going to line that up there and that's me good to go that's me all set up um, an evil EVL drip tip on a resurrection on an iStick 50 watt um, and I'm still at 26 watts on a 0 0.7 ohm joule coil at uh, 4.2 volts job done very very easy um, that wasn't rehearsed, that wasn't, you know, rehashed and redone just because it's in camera. That was me doing a coil, as I always do a coil. Um, yes, I have coil master kits here, and, and I have um, Kuro concept kits here and whatnot. Uh, but, yes, it makes it easier. But, yes, just having a rod, a drill bit with that you know the diameter of, it's just as easy. Um, well, maybe once you've been doing it for a while. Um, what can I tell you? That I mean, the thing to take away from this is, if you're interested in wrapping your own coils, steam engine. Go along to steam engine and muck about with the numbers and, you know, see how it's going to work. The heat flux thing is quite good in that, you know, if you're going to use really thick wire, there might have, you might have to put a hell of a lot of wattage to it to get a decent temperature from it. There might be a slow ramp up time when you push the fire button. There's so many variables there. So being able to do it on screen before you commit to building is a huge bonus. And I would strongly advise anybody to go and do that first to get an, you know, an idea how the coil is going to perform. Um, you're going to read and hear people in vape shops and forums and whatnot talking about so, twisted so many different types of coils um, it's like a sub community in itself of the vaping world you have like geeks in every aspect you know ones that like regulated ones that like mechanical mods people that like squonkers people that like coils to be all fancy people you, you know so many different subsets ignore it ignore it all you have to do is go to steam engine punch in some numbers wrap a coil throw it in put some cotton in and you're away that setup that I've done there with Canthal I will change that cotton out once a week so I'll pull the cotton out I will dry burn the coils I will apply heat to I will push the fire button with the cotton out until the coils glow red. I'll blow on them, put some new cotton in, and I'm away again. And there's a wasp in here. Anyway, um, and, and that's all I do. So it's not, people say there's a lot of faff. It's not. You are coiling once a month. What happens is, is that people get into it. So they start mucking about with coils. If you want to muck about with them, yeah, change them out every bloody day if you want. If you just want to vape, leave them in there, use them for a good old month or something like that, and then change them out. Um, that's it. And that's just for canthal. There's a whole other can of worms when it comes to things like titanium and nickel and whatnot. Uh, but I'm just doing a bog standard canthal build here. Um, 
I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that would find fault in what I've done. My coils are messy. I could have done this. I could have done that. Yes, I could have. But I am from the school of if it glows red, puts out vapour, jobs are good in. Um, and that's all that matters to me. Um, I hope this helps somebody. Um, feel free, go along to my Facebook page or my web page and comment. And if you've got any suggestions for other people, feel free to throw them in there as well. That's it from me, guys. Cheers now. Bye.